Reprise du débat, l'honorable... Resuming debate, the honorable member for Richmond, Arthabasca. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I'd like to thank the NDP for tabling this motion today. It's a motion that's worth debating, clearly, because the issue is important. Canadians have questions, especially about the Liberal Party's uh, stated desire to legalize marijuana. It's a very important issue. And it's also important to clarify things for some Canadians who don't necessarily disting distinguish between legalization and decriminalization. But it's a very important distinction. So I'd like to thank the NDP for their involvement on this file. The problem, to my mind, is with the Liberal Party's position. They're trivializing the issue of drug use, especially among the most vulnerable and among youth. And the problem is also that uh, the Liberals claim to consult people and respect other jurisdictions, but it's all well and good to try to pander to one part of the population by saying you're going to le legalize drugs, but you have to consult the provinces and the police forces. Not many people have, in fact, been consulted on this. So the provincial governments are focusing healthy lifestyle choices. They're trying to encourage people to quit smoking. There's all kinds of regulations around that. And that's been done, that healthy lifestyle choices to protect Canadians' health. But on the other hand, you see the Liberal government in the throne speech uh, talking about their decision to legalize marijuana. I have a hard time getting on board with that kind of movement that goes against my own personal values. I understand that some Canadians have already smoked marijuana. I don't think people should be thrown in jail. I don't think they should be judged just for doing that. But promoting drug use is quite a different thing. And that's what this is all about. The Liberals, uh, they don't seem to really have a plan. They talk about having a plan, but nobody's seen it. One thing's for sure, for a party that makes legalizing marijuana a plank in their platform, they are hardly inspiring Canadians, inspiring confidence in Canadians uh, with this so-called mystery plan. The police forces, meanwhile, don't know what to do to enforce uh, marijuana laws. Uh, parents are concerned. There's a lack of direction here, a lack of leadership, uh, and how do you protect your children uh, in that kind of circumstances? Meanwhile, there's about 43 illegal shops that have popped up uh, in Toronto alone. Many of those shops open their doors uh, right next door to uh, schools or other, uh, other stores. One store opener said that we will stand up. Uh, we will not be intimidated by the police. And this was from Toronto City News. If the sellers of marijuana are right next to police stations and, and other businesses, well, how can you claim there's a plan, Mr. Speaker? The sellers boast about selling their product in different forms, as cookies, as candies, and of course, these are things that appeal to kids. Imagine, Mr. Speaker, in Vancouver, there are more pot shops, illegal pot shops, than Starbucks. It's easier to buy pot than coffee in Vancouver. That shows how serious the problem is. Another thing, Mr. Speaker, there's no doctor that I know of who would be willing to say that the Liberal plan is a good one. Some, of course, we'd have to see the plan to be able to be sure of that. But the 
St. Justine Research Center, which is a hospital uh, for sick kids, uh, they organized a conference uh, not so long ago of scientists on the theme of cannabis and youth health. What does the science say? We who are often accused of being against scientists, let me give you some figures. The council was against what was rather negative about the health effects for young people. Uh, medical prescriptions will be uh, for medicinal marijuana will be pointless because people will be able to get it easily or grow it in their own gardens. There'll be no way of controlling access to these drugs. The Canadian Society of, Pedi of Pediatricians says that younger people are at greater risk of having mental health issues, including psychosis and schizophrenia. And I'm not making this up, Mr. Speaker. I'm talking about uh, what the experts are saying, but I know there are better ways of looking after your health than smoking marijuana. You, presenting marijuana in the form of cookies or candies are, are, is very dangerous. Young people could end up unwittingly consuming these drugs. These drugs, marijuana and other recreational drugs, are used for their effects on the nervous system. They have various uh, dissociative effects. They affect memory, and they cause uh, short-term stress. That's Paul Freeman, a uh, scientist at the University of Western Ontario. Studies show that young people are more at risk of having mental health problems, including psychosis and schizophrenia. That's the Canadian Society of Pediatricians who came to that conclusion. Regular use among young people uh, affects mental capacity in those under 25. Young people are particularly vulnerable to the effects of consuming marijuana because adolescence is a critical period for brain development. THC in the brain at such a critical period can hinder brain development and impair brain functioning. It can lead to psychotic episodes and mental illness like schizophrenia. That last quote comes from the Gray Report, which brings together tens of thousands of researchers who it's peer-reviewed. There's no f uh, pharmaceutical funding that goes into that kind of study. The Liberals are talking about legalizing marijuana, but this raises a number of problems, uh, including impaired driving. Legalizing marijuana, uh, we, as we've seen from recent events in Toronto, uh, there would be no way of controlling domestic production and access of young people. If people are growing their own for medicinal purposes, if that's legal, if you can do that at home, well, when things get legalized, then people will be able to do it everywhere at home. They'll be able to grow their own plants, and there'll be nothing to protect children. The Liberals claim that legalizing will limit the propagation of organized crime. Examples show, actually, that there will be no effect on organized crime. How will the Liberals control imports and exports of drugs between Canada and the U.S. when marijuana will be legal in Canada but illegal in the U.S. Impaired driving, marijuana impaired driving is of concern to Canadian police forces. There will be an increase in drivers who are high. Almost half of Canadians in a poll, Mr. Speaker, said almost half of those who drive while high feel that they're no danger on the road. And the last thing for those who talk about other states and the only country that has legalized marijuana. in Since Washington legalized marijuana, over one-third of impaired drivers are high. Over 13,000 cases were tested last year, Mr. Speaker, and that comes from the Washington Chief of Police. Decriminalizing cannabis use has not caused organized crime to disappear, despite what some might claim. They have simply adjusted 
and set up their own coffee shops, and they're growing their own. This is Stefan Kiri, a criminologist, uh, who said that. Mr. Speaker, I think that we have a serious problem here. There's no plan. There's no organization. There's no information about how things are going to unfold. So before we talk about decriminalization, we should know about what the Liberals are planning. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Thérèse de Blainville. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to thank my colleague for his presentation on marijuana. I would have liked to know it's, of course, dangerous when the Conservatives try to do scientific analysis because they just lump things together, uh, disparate things from scientists. So I'd like to know what would my colleague have said of prohibition back in, you know, do we have to go back in time to the days of uh, alcohol prohibition? Uh, should we not uh, allow tobacco to be legal? I'm, I'm really having a hard time understanding what he's arguing, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Richmond, Arthabasca. Well, I'd like to thank my colleague for his wise question. I did say in my speech, if he'd been listening, that I never claimed to be a scientist or a doctor or an expert. All I said was, all I did was quote experts. I'd like my colleague opposite, instead of asking me questions about alcohol and cigarettes, can he quote a single expert who clearly says that consuming marijuana is a good way of looking after your health? Because currently, Mr. Speaker, there is no evidence to that effect. And what I'd like to hear from the uh, leader here, the Prime Minister, who's a boxer, he seems to be pro-sports, I'd like to see him promoting healthy lifestyle choices rather than encouraging young people to try drugs. And he's trivializing drug use uh, through this uh, promise to legalize marijuana. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It being 6.15, it's my duty to interrupt the proceedings and uh, put the question uh, uh, immediately to a vote. The question is the following one. By Ms. Uh, Quash. M move that the House recognize the contradiction of continuing to give Canadian criminal record for simple, sorry, for simple possession of marijuana after the government has stated that it should be uh, a crime. It should not be a crime. B. Recognize that this situation is unacceptable to Canadians, municipalities and law enforcement agencies. C. Recognize that a growing number of voices, including that of a former Liberal Prime Minister, are calling for decriminalization to address this gap. And D. Call upon the government to immediately de decriminalize the simple possession of marijuana for personal use. Is it the pleasure of the House to adopt the motion? All those in favour of the motion, please will please say yay. yay. All those opposed, please say nay. Yay. It is my opinion that the nays have it. Okay, I declare the motion defeated. Oh, sorry. Okay. Call in the members. Or okay, we have. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we would ask that this vote be deferred to Tuesday, June 14th, immediately following the question period. The Honourable Member for Hochelaga, the NDP Whip, I think if you seek it, you'll find unanimous consent to see the clock at 6.30. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Do I have the unanimous consent of the House? Is it the pleasure of the House to see the clock at 6.30? Okay, then it's 6.30. This will now proceed to the taking of the deferred record division of the motion at third reading 
stage of Bill C-15. Call in the members.